welcome back to Art with Ms. Choate. I hope you're having a wonderful day so far. Today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be making ornaments. Now these ornaments can be made out of salt dough and I'll put a link to Miss Nutra's salt dough recipe video from the Winfield Public Library. She does a wonderful salt dough recipe or you can use any kind of soft moldable clay. I'm going to be using an oven baked clay that I got from Michael's for about a dollar a package. So it depends on what you want to use, what you have around your house. I've had this clay, even if it gets hard, you can soften it back up just rolling it in your hands. So whatever you have around your house, if you want to make your own clay and bake it, or if you want to buy a pre-made clay, either way is fine. We're going to be making ornaments. Now, they don't have to be ornaments. It could just, you could make these figures. We're gonna be learning how to either trace an image and then cut that out of your clay, or we can be molding into 3D. So let's grab our supplies. If you need to go watch that video on making salt dough, go ahead and do that. And then let's get started on how to form these ornaments. So for making these ornaments or clay figures, what we're gonna need is either some Cookie cutters can work really nice to press in and cut out your shapes, or you can go ahead and like I did, I drew ahead some shapes that I'm gonna be able to cut out and then I can trace them and that way I'm not trying to figure it out with the clay. I'm basically using this as a silhouette cookie cutter, but I'll have to take a knife to cut it. And then I also have some silicone little forms. I can press the clay into here. You can experiment. See, like these could give you nice heart textures. You could press this into the clay. You can take lace and press that in to get a nice texture. I'm also using just a flat glass container to press my clay out instead of a rolling pin. Or if you have a rolling pin set aside for art, or if you're gonna wash it real good, that works too any kind of mat to protect your surface because the clay or salt dough can mess up your table. And then I'm, I have a tray ready with some parchment paper on it. So when my ornament's done, I'll just put it on here, but I'm gonna bake them all at the same time. So I have a few little tools, anything to kind of, you know, uh, cut, or this isn't very sharp, but it doesn't need to be. It's just a little piece of plastic I'm using a little bit of like a straight razor blade to do some cutting. Anything you have around these I use a lot for art so I don't mind using them for my clay. Then these are some clay. These were a dollar, a little more than a dollar each, a dollar five, a dollar five cents at Michael's. Uh, I used a coupon and was able to get all of those packages like 40% off or 20% off. So anyways my point is you can get them fairly good oven bake, or you can use Miss Nucha's salt dough recipe that I'll put in the description and linked right here. That way you can make the salt dough and they last pretty good. Uh, the reason I like this is when you're making ornaments, like I'm trying, I'm going to do like first home, dog, these things are going to be sentimental. I want them to last a long time. So I'm going to be using this clay, but the other ones last pretty good too. So this was made out of salt dough back in 2015 when I got pepper and you can see it's aging. It's starting to yellow a little bit. And so because of this, I decided I want to make a new set that will last a little bit longer. So that's just something to think about. You can paint it. It probably would have been better if I would have coated it all in paint and that wouldn't have happened. So if you're going to use salt dough, you can always paint it afterwards as well. So now I'm going to cut out all my shapes, have all my cookie cutters ready and then we're going to start rolling out our dough. So if you're using salt dough, you don't have to worry about warming it up. It's pretty easy to knead. And if you're using any kind of oven bake, I recommend doing the softer types. But you're going to have to warm it up in your hands. So I'm just going to take this whole thing out. Once you take it out of the package, you should store it in a Ziploc baggie. That'll keep it from drying out. So you're going to have to start just squeeze it in your hands back and forth, roll it around. Make sure your hands are clean because any kind of lint or whatever you see is starting to get into there. You know, I thought my hands were clean, but that's okay. You're just going to start to warm it up. Make sure your surface is clean. If you're switching colors, you're going to have to wipe down. So we're gonna roll it out. Now, if you wanna blend another color in, you could put strips in and then it's gonna be marbled. And I think we're gonna do that. So we're gonna add another color in. I'm gonna go with this 
cute pink color. I think I don't want the pink in all of it. I think I want some of it white. So I'm gonna keep that aside. I'm gonna just get them into a coil. And I'm gonna put this coil next to it. And you could do two coils, one on each side. That'll change up how it marbles. You can see I'm just rubbing my hands together. I'm spreading my fingers out. You could do it on here too. And you see I'm bringing my hands out. I'm moving my, if I just stayed here, not as much would happen, but I'm just pulling my hands, pulling the clay. So now I can put this here, you can take that off. You can make a pattern. And now we can put those together. You can twist them. Kind of looks like a candy cane of sorts. Now in order to get these colors, like if you wanted this pink and white to actually mix together, it would take a good amount of time to actually work them. They stay separate for a while. So right now I'm just gonna work them. And now using some force, I'm gonna bring them together. And you're gonna go until you're happy with it. If you like how that looks, then you can stop. Or I'm gonna twist it a little bit more. Now it's getting really soft. It's really easy to play with. You can even go in a circle, see how that turns out. Now I'm getting to the point where I'm thinking about flattening it out. So I'm gonna take my dish and I'm just flattening it. And you can see like, do I like how that, not marbled enough yet for me. So I'm gonna roll it back up again. And we're gonna keep going until you have a design that you like. Now it's starting to get to a marbled effect that I like. The colors are starting to mix a little bit and you're seeing more like, like um, different shades of pink. I don't like when it just stays the two colors. They're starting to mix together a little bit. So I have a cup, maybe a little bit more to go or I, I can just start to roll it out so I can use one of my cutters. I need to make it big enough, but I also don't wanna go too thin when I'm rolling it out. So I'm thinking quarter inch is a good thickness. I'm also going to mix in. I decided I like how this is looking, so I'm going to do one more little bit of the color. So I'm really starting to like that. I could either add in some more colors or I could stop where I'm at. I think I'm going to add one more color. So a little different technique. I'm going to just place these around. I'm going to push them in a little bit. Maybe a couple on the other side. I'm actually going to leave these for maybe a different project or if I need to add more I can always do that. Go ahead give them a little press. Press both at the same time and now I'm going to roll it to incorporate again. Now I'm really happy with it. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna keep, we're gonna press it till it's the thickness that we want. Try to keep all your ornaments the same width. It's okay if um, they're thinner than mine or thicker than mine, just as long as you keep all yours relatively the same thickness. Because then when you go to bake them, you don't have to worry. So you just want to press it out till you have enough. And I don't necessarily want to move it here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut it and then repress it the right way. So I need more down here, but I don't like how my pattern is going to be different. So I'm going to press it, kind of incorporate it again. You 
You want to make sure you don't overwork your clay with your colors. So there we go. I got it pressed out. The It's about an eighth of an inch. That's not bad. And I like how both sides look. So I'm going to put my stencil or if you have cookie cutter, boom, super easy. This will be a little bit harder, but not bad. You're just going to put your outline on there and you can use anything that's sharp enough to go ahead and cut it. Now, before you bake it, you wanna make sure that you like how everything looks. You can touch up your edges, you can smooth them out. You can even use, if you have stamps and you wanna put the stamps in, or I know I mentioned this earlier, these hearts, we could go ahead and press those in to get that heart texture. And then I have letter stamps and I'm gonna stamp those in or you can even take and carve something in. Now this one is ready for the oven. So I can put it on my tray and wait for the other ones to be ready to put to bake. I almost forgot, if these are an ornament, then you need to put a cut out for the string to go through. So I'm using a pen cap and something that I can pop the clay out of. Give yourself enough distance away from the top. And you can pop that right out. I went ahead and made sure that it's nice and big so that way my I can use any kind of string I want. So I'm gonna do one more with these leftovers because the thing is I can't put this back in the pink bag. I can't put it back with the white. So I can either reuse this or I can add more color to it to kind of change it up. So I'm just gonna use this exact same one and we're gonna roll out. I'm gonna do a dog bone for this one. I do like this bell. And this is where you can play. So I'm going to go with the dog bone and I'm going to cut it out. Now if your shape doesn't come out perfect, you can go ahead and shape it with your hands. Don't forget the circle, but for this one I don't think I want it as big. So I might just put it a little smaller and I'm gonna use something, I'm just gonna pivot this in a circle. And there we go, that hole is made. You could go through and clean it up if you want. There we go. Now I could add any decorations I want. Once you get all your ornaments done, put them on a tray and put them in the oven according to the directions for your specific clay because brands are different temperatures or if you're making your own, follow the recipe Miss Nucha and what she said to bake them at and just monitor them and you can start to tell. If you start to like smell that they're burning, then you take them out, okay? Because you can burn them so don't put them in for too long. The clay I'm using is supposed to be in for only 15 minutes and so it's not gonna be, uh, you know, it's 275 for 15 minutes. Yours may be longer, might be shorter, so just pay attention to the recipe that you're using. So I hope you had fun making your ornaments, either for Christmas or maybe you do them so they can hang in the window when, like, you know, on a suction cup, that could be really cute. So there's lots of different options. You can paint them. You can do so many things to these clay figures. So I hope you had a wonderful time. Remember, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe so you get notified every time I post a new video. Bye friends.